Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to talk about upper and lower hemi continuity of correspondence and do a couple of practice problems during this series. Uh, this is a little bit of a harder mathematical concept to get your head around. So i am just decided to say, hey, let me make a couple of example videos on this. This is the first one. Let's go. So before getting into the actual example, let's talk a little bit about the definition of upper and lower hemi continuity. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the definition and I'm going to break it down into pieces and we're going to go and check uh, if each one of these pieces are uh, at, you know, our point, which we are going and evaluating. So just to recall, um, if we want to be able to go and evaluate whether a certain point is upper or lower hemi continuous, we need to go and know these definitions. So for upper hemi continuity, a correspondence is said to be upper hemi continuous if for all sequences around X that converge to it, and for all sequences that is said to be contained in the image of uh, Xn, meaning that we want to go and say that the image around Xn, meaning that the sequences around Xn is going to be contained in the image of it, meaning that there's going to be something corresponding to it, then there exists a sequence Yn that converges to Y in the image of X, right? So this is a little bit of a hard thing, but just keep this in your mind. Uh, the second one is for lower hemi continuity is for all y in g of x, that is for all values y in the image of g of x, and for all uh, xn or all sequences x that converge to x, then there exists a sequence of y n that converge to y, and y n is contained in the image of uh, g of xn, meaning that if we were to evaluate g at xn, we would come out with yn. Note that it's possible to have the first condi two conditions, but not the conclusions. So we need to make sure that all these conditions are met before declaring correspondence is upper or lower hemicontinuous at a given point. Let's get into the example. So we have a simple correspondence there. And again, I'm not really using any mathematics over here. We're just looking at it as a picture. And the question is, is, is this uh, correspondence upper hemicontinuous or lower hemicontinuous at point X zero right over here? So let's first look at our definition of upper hemicontinuity. We say that for all uh, Xn that converges to X. So we can just see by looking at this, if we consider a sequence going from this side and a sequence going from the other side, uh, we go and have that limit, that meaning that that proper limit goes and exists. So that's one thing that we can go and check off on our list for upper hemi continuity. The second thing is that for all yn such that yn is in g of xn, um, we want to know if that's there. So we could say see that there's a sequence of for all yn such that the sequence is in the image of g of xn, right? Um, so that's there, meaning that we can go and say that yn is in this image. Then we can say that then there exists a yn that converges to y0, right? Like right over here, meaning that if we were to consider it on the left-hand side converging to y0 and uh, the yn converging from the next size, that's going to be contained in the image of xn. So we can say that that's true for that case. So we can say that our correspondence at x naught is in fact upper hemi continuous, so because it's continuous, because the limit exists on the right hand side and left hand side, both going up and down. So now let's talk about uh, lower hemi continuity for all y naught in g of x naught, right? So we can go and say that this is contained in its image. That means that if we were to go and look at y naught and evaluate it at x right as in it would be right there the second point is that x n is the limit goes and exists meaning that for every sequence that approaches x naught right we can go and see from the left hand side and from the right hand side now for this last one here uh we say that there exists a y n that goes to uh y naught over here so we can clearly you know just pick a case in our correspondence, you know, that there is, exists a, you know, complete sort of limit inside uh, this correspondence from the y values, right, that goes and approaches y naught. 
but we need this also the second condition of y n being contained in the image of g of x n. So the best way to think about this is that if we were to consider you know some neighborhood around uh, x naught and you know some uh, you know alt some other you know neighborhood that is around y n and we can go and say that if we were to go and uh, I guess you know connect these sort of neighborhoods I know this isn't the best sort of drawing here but we can find uh, you know some point here right let's call that the y n point that is not in our correspondence so that's why we have this guy here right this is why we have that problem so just to conclude, we can say that our correspondence is upper hemi-continuous but not lower hemi-continuous at point X naught. I hope this example video helps you. Take care.